All right, all right, all right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Lockout Men podcast show. I am back. I am your host, Lockout Men. And we about to get into it right quick. I do have a special guest on today. This young lady come by by way of Facebook. She's a two-year driver, and she's from North Carolina. You want to know what? I was just down in North Carolina not too long ago. I'm thinking about going back for another staycation down there. Carolina in girls, best in the world. Oh, uh, you say they? <laughs> you, you say the Carolina girls, best in the world, huh? Oh, I, yeah. I, I see. I, I, I see. She ready. She she ready to come on in and. <laughs> And 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 chop it up with me about her experience in trucking and all like that. Like I said, she's a she's a two year driver. But before I get into all that, I got to introduce myself, which is Lockout Men. And like I said before, welcome to the Lockout Men podcast show. And right now, I have a special guest, and I would like to bring on. Now, see, I gotta I, I gotta pronounce her name right because it's kind of. It's you know you know me guys I I beat up people's <laughs> names like crazy but I like to welcome to the show Sam Sauce Boss to the show. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sam Sauce Boss. Yes. yes. So Sam is Sam. Sam is what short for what? Samantha. Samantha. So yeah. Sam Sauce Boss. How how did you come up with that name? Where where did that name come from? <laughs> Long story, but basically it just means tipping and dripping through, you know, the state, through the highways, byways, and Okay, okay, okay. Give us uh give us a little background about yourself. Where 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 are you from? Uh and and all that good stuff. Well, I'm a country girl. I was I'm I was born and raised in North Carolina, Wilson, North Carolina, Wilson, Wilson. Mm-hmm. Um I started in retail and I've always worked. I start I started working at the age of like nineteen. And I've been working ever since. I started retail. I moved on to um, telecommunications, and then kind of got burnt out, burnt out with the office team. So I moved on to trucking, and it's been very, it's, it's been tough at times, but very rewarding. Where? So, how how old are you now? How how old are you now? I'm thirty one. All right, so you say nineteen, so you, so you started in retail. What was what was uh that was just straight out of high school or anything like that? But what what was yes. what was life like for you back then? So yes, that was um straight out of high school. Um, you know, I did I did retail work straight out of high school. I did do some college, um, but you know, with the black community, we all know that. You know, sometimes it gets difficult to try to pay for school. So I, I chose to go to work um, instead. But, you know, we, we can all get it done, you know, with the, with the degree or without. So you actually did you – so you 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 did try college, but you didn't finish? Yes, you gra- I did try college. You, you, you graduated. No, I, I didn't finish. No, I didn't finish. Did, did you graduate high school? Yes, I, I graduated high school. Oh. I didn't finish, didn't finish college. Oh, okay. Well, what was the what was the reason that 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 you didn't get a chance to finish college? I mean, what what was uh what was the stumping point for you when you realized that you was done with college? I really didn't want to uh, get in debt per se, uh, trying to further my education. Um, you know, it's always something you, you can go back to. Uh, but at, at the time, you know, financial, my financial situation, 
that my family's financial situation at the time wasn't, um, it, it just wasn't a good time for me to do that. Okay, okay. So, the, so you you just pretty much went from job to job. You looked like you was doing a stint at Dollar General, uh, and like you said before, a couple of other retail spots. Um, I was going to ask you, like, you know, the reason why you didn't finish college was because, you, you know, if you if if you got kids, but by the sounds of it, no, I don't by the sounds kids. of it, you don't you don't have kids. No, I don't have kids. Oh, okay. Let me ask you this. Now, in your now, in your opinion, being that you're a truck driver and all like that, how long you first thing first, how how long you been driving for? I've been driving two years now. Just a tad bit over two years, but two years. Okay. Okay. Uh two years at the two years at the same company or you you bounce from company no, to company? No, I've been with point? two different companies so far. Oh, okay. Okay. So in your opinion, uh a person that might have kids do you think do, do you think that if you would have had kids you uh, would you would have had a different thought of going into trucking if you would if you would have had kids or going into trucking still would have been on your plan a uh going into trucking really wasn't my plan at all Mm-hmm. Um, and I would never, I wouldn't say, um, well, me personally, if I had kids, I, I would have to say that uh, trucking would not be, you know, my choice, um, my, my A choice. Um, but I know plenty of people that, you know, they've made it a choice and it works great for them. But me personally being raised in a two parent household, the traditional two parent household, um, you know, I couldn't see myself, you know, raising my kids, you know, not, you know, being on the truck. Okay, okay. All right. So you say you've been in uh been in the game for a little bit for uh, a little bit over two years and prior to that you uh you did uh you did uh retail work. Any anything else you you done prior to uh coming into trucking? Um, I, I work in insurance, home insurance. Um, you know, I pretty much the office setting after I did retail, mm-hmm. and um, I kind of got burnt out on that. I did that for about two years. I got burnt out on that, so uh, the office. So that's when I went into trucking at that point. All right. So, what was your inspiration to get into trucking? What What, what was your why Why did you feel that trucking was, was the way to go? Um, I didn't know pet trucking was the way to go. <laughs> That's what's crazy. I, did, I didn't know that. Um, but I do enjoy traveling. Um, I've always enjoy, enjoyed traveling. Um, I'm always going somewhere. And so why not have a career where you can get paid to see different places that people read about, look at on TV, and that sort of thing. So why why not why not make the money why not make money doing that? Now you know what? Now you sound you you sound you sound just like the you know these YouTubers that be on here that be like, yo, come and get into trucking and 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 you can you can get paid while seeing the sites and all like that, but. And at in in actuality, you know, in reality, the sites that you're going to see is either three, one or three places: the shipper, the receiver, and the truck stop. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? They, right. They, but, in, but but the in between, the in between, you know, the in between the receiver and the truck stop and the shipper, uh-huh. you see some you see some sites you don't normally get to see as you know a person that you know may work a regular nine all right so what 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 sites what what sites have you have you have you seen already what what were some of the sites that uh that 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 trucking took you through so far um 
going to California, I would have never thought, um, you know, before I got into trucking, I would ever get to go to California. Mm-hmm. That that was something that, you know, to me personally was a great achievement to me, you know, being from the East Coast, um, being able to see the West and the West Coast and to experience that and get paid doing it. Um, I really enjoyed that. Now, you know, um, also getting able. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Also, um, being able to see, you know, different mountain ranges like, you know, Black Mountain, Appalachian Mount, Mountains, um, you know, uh, mountains out west. Uh, normal, you know, regular people that work nine to five now, you know, there are people that, you know, they're able to take vacations and go see these places or go see these mountains or travel these areas. But, you know, as a truck driver, you know, you're able to see these areas. Um, you're able to get, you know, routed to these areas and get paid, you know, get paid to go there. So. All right. Did you, did you get a chance to experience any of these places you went to? Did you, did you park the truck and, and take an Uber to the city to experience the places you went to? Um, I did get a chance to do a, do that one occasion a couple of times. Um, I went out to Roanoke. I took a 34 in Roanoke. Um, saw a couple of sites there. Uh, they had the National Bridge out there in Virginia. Um, I was able to take uh, 34 uh, in California. Uh, see, see a couple of sites there, like the local local life there. Um, Virginia, I mean, I, I know Virginia is not all that exotic, but uh, Virginia out towards the coast, uh, Norfolk, um, the tunnels, uh, battleships, uh, bases, things of that sort. Because um, I, love, I love the water, so. Okay, okay, okay. So you say you was in uh you 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 was in trucking for two years. Well, you you you've been in trucking for two years. So within your experience, uh, tell us tell us all your experience uh, within your two year time of trucking. Uh, starting out, um, you know, starting out, I just I really had to. Uh, really had to be positive quite a bit. I mean, I still have to be positive now, but um, trying to get into trucking, uh, the, just the testing alone, um, trying to get in, I, I had some obstacles. Um, I actually, you know, failed the, uh, the maneuver test at least four times. Um, I, drive, I actually drove bus for a short period of time, and they actually say that, Bus drivers had it harder to lead the truck, truck driving in trucks because, you know, we have the, you know, the big bus where, you know, it's just one piece of equipment compared like, to a truck. Like a Greyhound, that's that's what so, you drove? Or was it a school bus? No, like a school bus, a school bus, a school bus. Okay. Now, so, yeah, you, so, so, you, so you got your class B before you got your class A's, right? Okay, so did you go? So did you the 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 bus company that you drove for? Uh, did you get your did you get your CDLs through them, or was it a school that you went through to get your class B? Um, I actually got my class B through the state of North Carolina. Okay, so explain that. Because I was already, I was already working. I was already working for the state, okay. and they needed bus drivers, and they also would give you um, additional hours or full benefits if you became a, a bus driver, um, in addition to other work duties. So um, I saw it as an opportunity um, to kind of, you know, broaden my horizons uh, within that job during that time, and I took a chance. And um, it paid off. Uh, I feel like it paid off because um, it was a new experience. Um, I accomplished something I, I never thought I could accomplish. Um, you know, driving a you know a big piece of equipment. Um, 
so I, I took a chance on it. They they paid the expenses um, and served its purpose. And even after I left that job, I, I kept, you know, I kept that license maintained. And in so doing that, it helped me um, to upgrade that license to a Class A at this point. So doing the school, so driving for, so you drove for the state. So it was like a state run school yeah, or something school. like that. For, for school? school. Yes, yes. So how yes, a state public school, yes. Oh, okay. A state public school. Okay, okay, okay. So how was it how was it back then dealing with kids on uh on the school bus on a day to day basis? I really didn't have much of a problem. I mean, uh it was middle school kids. Um, you know, we all know kids are gonna be kids, but um, you know, small disagreements, uh, oh, he's in my seat, that type of thing. But it, it wasn't anything out of control, like any fights or anything. Um, so, I, I know a lot of people like, oh, kids, oh, I couldn't do it. You know, they're probably all over the place. I I just, I treated the kids well. They treated me well. You know, again, kids are going to be kids. You know, they're going to have little sense of that. But um, overall, it was a good experience. So you didn't have no you didn't have no issues or nothing like that. A kid got wrong with you, or you know, or any fights that you had to break up or anything like that. No, I never had any fights. I had to break up. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, I I never had a, a, a child get unruly. Um, you know, maybe you know this order on the bus, like you know, the kids getting too loud. You know, I have to talk to them a little bit stern, but. Other than that, you know, but those are that's kids being kids. You know, they they have a every now and then they have a you know high wire day and they get a little out of hand, you know, kind of loud. You know, kind of talk to them like, hey, you know, how we trying to get home, y'all calm down. Now you guys, you guys only had you you guys drive for a couple of hours in the morning, then y'all park or go home or hang out at the terminal. And then you guys go back and pick them up in the evening. How how do, how the pay structure was for a bus for a school bus driver? Um, you said how did how was the pay? Yeah, well, how's the how's the pay structure? Because you know you only you you drive for a couple hours in the morning. You know, like what, like at least like what two hours. Well, Two hours two in the morning, hours. and then about another two in yeah, the evening, roughly. and then you pretty much got your day to yourself. So how how was the how was the pay structure? Like, you, you did you get paid on, on a contract, or did you get paid for the two hours that you work, or I'm sorry for the four hours that you work, or do you get paid a full eight hours salary? How how was the pay structure for for uh for oh, a bus so driver? So it was salary. Yeah, so it was it was salary, and I did do a total of, of uh, four hours a day, depending on the route. Um, some of the routes will be a little bit longer than others, so it will be like you know maybe two and a half hours, but that that'll be you know that will be determined before you took that route. Um, it also depends on you know the staffing of the school because you know sometimes you may have a, a third load that you may have to get, or if a, a driver is out. You know, but that will be determined beforehand. But it would be, you know, four hours at a time. Um, I also did some additional duties like food service. Uh, they added into that, but again, that was that was all salary. Um, I did I did four hours food service normally, and then I also did uh, four hours um, driving uh, the school bus. So that okay. that will all be salary, and it will be paid once a month. But. So, so how, that, that was normally how it was. so did you guys still get paid while the school was out during the summertime too? No, no. Okay. So, so during the summertime, uh, what was it? Maybe about what? Two, two, about two June, months, June, uh, August, yeah, June to August. July and part of August. Yeah. Okay. So we looking at about two and a half months of you not working. So how do you supplement for that 
Uh, you you usually work a summer a summer job that you you know maintain during the school year, or either you have a, a job like um, you know you can be a lifeguard, you could be a CNA, um, you know different different people and different coworkers that I had. They had different ways of you know working around that, but most of us had a had a so called third job that we would have during the summertime. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, driving a school bus is definitely different than what you're experiencing now in the semi, you know, because the school bus, even though it's a longer bus, it's, it's long, but it's not, you know, it's not a two piece or anything like that. How was, how, how was the, how's the experience differ from, from what you driving now to what you was driving then as far as as far as pre-trip and um, uh, safety and all that other stuff. I'm sure safety is a bigger thing because you, you, you're you responsible for the kids that's on the bus as well. Yes, mo- most definitely. I mean, safety is always first in anything that you do, but, um, you know, safety is definitely a, a, a um, an important thing uh, when you have actual human beings, you know, that you're also responsible for in addition to the safety of the equipment. Um, so I, that that would be a, a big difference as far as going from school bus driving or even people that drive, um, you know, contract driving as far as like Greyhound and long distance uh, bus driving. Um, that would be the, the biggest difference, but it's still, safety is still at the forefront um, as far as importance. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be the biggest difference as far as human life. But you still have the human life element um, in trucking because you're on highways, you know, flooded with the driving public, you know. So uh, no, they're not with you, but they're still with you if that makes sense. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so how about pre-tripping the bus? <coughs> do, do you have to do these same uh, pre-tripping uh process that you that you would do uh, that you do on a semi or is it different on a on a school bus um i would say the same and also different i would say the same because you still have to do a brake test you still have to you know check your your main engine elements braking elements and you know of course all your tires um but i would say different for you know a semi because you have two pieces of equipment. You have your tractor and then you have your trailer separately. And then, depending on what type of driver you are, you change trailers often, so you have to check those trailers, you know, more, you know, periodically. But being a school bus driver, a lot of times your bus is assigned to you, so you kind of get used to your bus. You kind of know when your bus is having a problem. Um, you kind of know what to look for on your, you know, the bus that you're assigned to. So, um, I would say it's, it's the same and similar in, in different aspects. All right. So why did you, so why did you decide to leave the, uh, leave the school bus? What, what was your reason behind that? Um, going back to salary and going back to seasonal, um, you know, those two key reasons, um, would, you know, kind of, led to that opportunity ended because uh, it's not year-round and, again, salary. So um, you kind of box yourself in um, as far as pay-wise because you, you work a, cer- a certain set amount of hours and you uh, get paid a, you know that certain amount and you can't drive any more or any less per se. So um, the truck driving, you know, you still have a set rate, but the miles and the you know the different loads that you get kind of make the possibilities endless. And then you know you have different companies, you have different setups like long distance, regional. Um, of course, trucking is year round, so you can kind of make your own schedule too. So um, those those things kind of led to that um, that change in career at that time. Okay, so you uh, so you changed it. So, did 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 the state pay for your 
transition into your class A's or did you go to a school or or was it a company that you that you came on to that got you that that transition that transitioned you into your tra- uh into your class A? So the state did pay for my class B, but they did not pay for my class A. Um, I actually uh, paid, you know, for my class A, but I did go through a training company afterwards um, that sponsored me through uh, the school portion. Oh, okay. So you did. So you tried to. So let me see if I get this straight. You you tried to pay for it out of pocket. But you decided to go to so a, go through a company. It, so as far as paying for it out of pocket, I you know everybody has the expense of paying for the permit and actual license out of their pocket. Uh, but as far as like the you know the additional on the job experience, I went through a, a company for that. Okay, now no, what I'm what I'm trying to see when I'm I'm trying to see. Where did you go? Did did you go to school to get your class A, and did you pay for it out of pocket? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So you you went to you went so you went to a trucking school, and yes, you you paid. School. So how was it? Was it more or was it less that you had to pay, even though that you already had your class B? Uh, from the license, the particular license standpoint. Not counting the school from the license as far as like fees from the DMV, I would say it was less compared to other people that didn't have their their uh, B prior. Um, I only took one additional uh, computer test to get my permit, and I also took, um, you know, the regular portion as far as like the pre-trip maneuvers and driving test. But as far as getting into it permit-wise, Having my class B prior um, allowed me to just take the combination vehicle portion of the computer test, which was, you know, I think twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, compared to other people having to pay sixty or eighty for taking general knowledge, air brake, and combination vehicle. Oh, okay. Okay. But so- in, the, in the end, and in the long run, I think uh, as far as the driving school portion goes. Um, I think it's the same as far as cost because I didn't pay for that portion out of pocket up front, but after I completed that portion, I did pay that out of pocket once I completed my sponsorship. Okay. If that makes sense. Okay. So I had a company sponsor me through driving school, and then after I finished driving school, I repaid that money. So I didn't, you know, have any money up front. I didn't have to... You provide any money up front except for the permit and the um, license portion, which is handled through DMV. But as far as the driving school portion, that was sponsored, and I did pay all of that. Back. Okay, so you did pay all, so you paid all that back, so you wouldn't be uh, tied down to that particular company that sponsored you. Um, I I paid it back. Well, yes, yes. Yes, in that aspect, and also, I mean, I didn't want any, you know, bills lagging around because, again, I didn't complete college because I didn't want to be in debt, um, per se. So, um, again, same idealistic, you know, same idea. I didn't want to start another career in debt. So, I did what I needed to do as far as fulfilling all portions of my contract or portions of my commitment. You know, to the company that sponsored me, so that I would have, I would be, you know, debt free as oh. far as starting my career. And stuff. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so take us through right quick because you mentioned in the beginning that you that you flunked the the test four times. What happened? Why 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 were you able to? I mean, was you nervous or something like that? What what happened? Um, I, I wasn't nervous. Uh, it just took me a while to really get the concept of the trailer and the truck. The trailer, and it took me a while to get the concept as far as maneuvering, 
using the tractor to maneuver the trailer. Um, and coming from a, a class B, um, you don't have the second portion. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and coming from a personal vehicle, you don't have the second portion. So it's, it's diff- it, it, can, it can become difficult, but again, it's not something that you can't overcome. Okay. Um, but that, that was the most, I, I would have to say that was the most difficult part. Um, or portion of me getting my CDL was conquering the concept of the trailer and the tractor or the trailer and the truck. All right. All right. So, so now you're in it. You, you got with the company, you went out with a trainer. How was your experience with the, with, with the trainer? Did, did he uh did he train you good? Did he train you well? No issues. What what was your experience with the trainer? Was it a female? Training. <laughs> no. So I did not have a female trainer. I had two male trainers. Um I didn't really get a lot from those trainers. I have to be honest. I didn't really get a lot from those trainers. Um when I got out on my own, I learned. I learned, um, you know, as I did things more on my own, um, the moving of the tandem, um, backing, you know, confidence in backing, um, the driving per se. I didn't really have a problem with that because again, I had the prior experience of operating a, a heavy piece of equipment already, so I was kind of comfortable in driving. I was comfortable in checking mirrors. I was comfortable with pre tripping I was comfortable with all that prior because of the Class B experience. However, I think I think my trainers kind of took advantage of that and were kind of they didn't really they were kind of lax on giving me additional um, information about you know tandems and trailers and you know different things of that nature, but. Again, you know, every everybody's training experience varies. You know, some people have good ones, some people have bad ones. I'm not going to say it was all bad, but I could have learned more, you know. I did, But it's kind of hard to learn more if you don't really know what questions to ask because you're, you're still new, you know, trying to feel your way. Um, now, you say, but, you know, uh, now I you, learned a lot on my now, own. Now, you say you went through two, uh, train, uh, two trainers. Do you feel... Do you feel as though that they try to take advantage of you? So, no, no, not in that way um, as far as, you know, sexual harassment or sexual or anything of that nature. But the first experience, um, I would have to say that that kind of led to the second one. Um, He probably wasn't comfortable with people of color. Just to put it, you know. Okay. um, politically correct and you know all that i don't think he was very comfortable with people of color okay now now let me let me let me let me see if i can interject on that right quick because if you're going to be a train if if you're going to be a trainer if you're going to be a trainer you 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 can't feel that way about people you know what i'm saying if you're going to because you're going to be you you're going to be in the you're going to be in the truck with the, with that person for at least a month, you know what I'm saying? At least, yeah. at least, at least a month. And mm-hmm. if you if you that type of person that that has that feelings, you really don't need to be a trainer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You yeah, really don't need to be a part. trainer. Mm-hmm. They 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 don't need to be a trainer. You you being a right. trainer, you got to be open to. Uh, different ethnicities if i'm pronouncing that right <laughs> um you know <laughs> different races the only thing right. this this is the thing about different people being being in an enclosed space or different people being around people anyway no religion we don't talk religion because you know my right. re- my religion what i believe in I don't want to offend you because, you know, the same thing with you. You know, whatever you believe in, I don't want you, I I, I don't want you to feel offended and I don't want to feel offended. Number two is politics. 
yeah, you know, a lot right. of a lot of people have strong feelings about 45 right now. You know what I'm saying? So that's another thing right. we don't talk about. You know, me and my, you know, me and my best friend, you know, my best trucking buddy, he has he happens to be white and he likes 45. Unfortunately, my opinion of 45 varies <laughs> so but we don't but, right but we we don't we don't talk we don't talk about it so those once Understood. once Understood. you get that once you get that out the way mm -hmm. then the experience mm -hmm. the experience with y'all two should be a should be a good one but then but then again if he has if if he has that underlying feelings about you know other people then yeah how was you not not to go in too deep about it but how was you able to catch that and was it or did you just ask to be put on another truck after you after you caught it okay so i, I do apologize for background noise um <laughs> i'm in the middle of a load but um the, the first red flag, if you, you want to call it that, was when we were kind of, there's a small stage where the trainee and the trainer, they kind of briefly get to know each other, um, you know, like, dislike, um, you know, their training style or tips and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And during that period, he said, um, well, you would have, you will be, um, I'm not sure if he said female, but I do definitely recall, and it still sticks out in my memory to this day, you will be the first woman of color that I have trained. And I don't know why that had, that, and, and it didn't, but at that time, I don't know why he stated that. I don't know what, you know, drove him to call attention to that, but um, that that was a red flag, but at, at the same time, I'm like, look, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, get my experience. I'm trying to get this training done. You know, I'm mm -hmm. trying to just be open-minded and be positive mm -hmm. as you, as you should always be in trust. Right. Always be open-minded and always be positive. Right. Um, and that was the first red flag. Um, then, you know, as things went on, you know, we had a military background that didn't necessarily help his thing. Um, it did kind of make a tense uh, training environment at times. Um, it didn't ever get hostile, but it did make for a tense mm -hmm. uh, work environment sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but the situation kind of took care of itself. Okay. Um, and, to, and to explain that, towards the end of my training time with him, um, he was driving during his time and after his time was completed, I, I woke up and woke up from the sleeping birth area and realized we were on the side of the road. And I was thinking that we were broke down. And I asked him about it, and he said um, he ran out of time. And uh, I, I want to say either he got caught up in rush hour or took a long turn or something like that. And he said, this is where we're going to be for tonight. I'm like... What? Like wait, like right, like right on the yeah, side of the yeah. road. So he's one of them drivers yeah, on the side of the road. He's one of them drivers that like to run out his 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 entire clock down to the minute. I don't know about that. Looking back on it now, I feel like at that point he had already made necessary necessary ne the necessary calls um, to rid himself of me off the truck. But I didn't know that at the time. Okay. So I guess at that point he was like, the heck with it. You know, I'm getting rid of her. So it is what it is. I didn't know that at the time. So, so I'm like, so you, you know, felt, so you, why are we on the side of so you felt that it was him that was, that was, that was, that was pushing you off the truck or try to get rid of you yes, off the truck. For a fact. For a fact. Looking back on it now, for a fact. You know, he was trying to get me off that truck. And, um, you know, looking back on the very first red flag when we first met, um, you know, that woman of color, that has nothing to do with you training me. 
obviously looking on the outside, I am a woman of color. So that doesn't need to be stated. That doesn't need to be, you know, expounded upon. Mm-hmm. You know, or anything like that. <laughs> All right. So, so picking up the pace, you you got on with another trainer, and that pretty much went went a little bit better. Can you repeat that one more time? I said you 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 got off his truck, got on to another trainer's truck, and that went a little bit better. Yes, and <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> okay. Yes and no. Um, so to finish up the first situation, uh-huh. um, you know, me being a female, not even leaving out the woman of color portion, me being a female, I just felt like, okay, I am a female. Right. You as a, a older gentleman have a wife and daughter. Okay. What if you had a wife or a daughter training to do something and a, and a man, no matter what race, color, creed, knew that he had a female on his truck and purposely, because when you've been driving for a while, you know how to sit plan, you know how to gauge your time, you purposely decide to take a 10 hour break on the side of a road <laughs> with, with you know on a shoulder of a road I'm not even talking about an off ramp now I get there's you know that's the time call for different desperate measures you know some people have to take a ramp here and there but I'm not even talking about a ramp I'm talking about side of the road shoulder of the road type of thing okay you know he wouldn't want his wife or daughter to have the experience having to uh, relieve themselves like an animal. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, I mean, just to put it nicely, I just I just couldn't wrap my head around, you know, if he knew his wife or daughter was being subjected to those conditions, he would be outraged. I think any, any man, you know, that... Uh, any man would be outraged that their mother, wife, daughter uh, would be purposely subjected to those types of work conditions. Hmm. Would you not agree? I I would tend to agree with you. I mean, I got actually I got in trouble uh, at my previous uh, trucking company for pulling off to the side of the road and being on the shoulder, you know. Uh, a KB truck came through and took off my driver mirror and come to find out that I wasn't even supposed to be on the shoulder. Like you, the only way you are supposed to be on the shoulder, like literally on the shoulder is in an emergency and you had to have your hazard lights on and you had to have your train, uh, your triangles out and all like that, you know, an emergency. But if you pull over to the right. side of the road, because, you know, I, I always, you know, I was telling the uh, safety guy at the time, I said, well, you know, I pull off to the side of the road so I can use the phone to help another driver that was in need. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I heard a thump and happened to look outside and my driver mirror gone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he was telling me that, yeah, you know, you you're not supposed to be on the on the on the shoulder unless for an extreme emergency. Like, you know, but uh to take your 10 hour to you yes. know, to and take so your 10 hour a truck driver now. Yes. Not exactly. unless uh, not unless right. you know it's like uh weather related or anything like that. But shit, even 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 that, you could still, you know, you could still go into personal conveyance to get yourself off right. the off the highway to find, right. you know, to right. find a safe haven. So right. he right. he so he actually took his he actually took the ten hour on the shoulder. Ten hour. On the shoulder of the highway. And no on no the cop of the highway. No 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 cops, no troopers, no DOT came over and and said anything to you guys. I mean, literally overnight no, until in no. the morning. 
no, overnight, overnight. Y'all, he, you know, he he didn't I'm even make sure. it down. He didn't even make it down to a to a rest stop or something like that. I mean, realize you got a female on the truck. Again, you know? again, yes, again. You know, this these are things that that stick out to me in my training experience. And you know, I at that at that moment, I knew, okay, this person does not like me, does not want me on their truck, in their workspace, living, you know, living living space. I'm not wanted here. I'm not welcome here. And he, you know, made that clear. I didn't know it at the time, but we were en route to go by the terminal to get me off his truck. Hmm. And, you know, the way he dressed it up was, you know, I had issues. He, and, wait, wait, wait. I, he, I, I got this after the fact. Wait, 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 wait. He said he had what with you now? I had issues. And he did not go into detail that, you know, I'm he, I'm disruptive on the truck or I'm aggressive on the truck or I'm um, causing, you know, danger to our lives on the truck or so, I'm being inappropriate on the truck. Wait, 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 wait. wait. He just said he had issues with you and requested that you get off the truck without no, without no explanation, no rhyme, no reason, no nothing. Mm-hmm. 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 Wow. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Wow. And um, okay. you know, later on, I I found out that he was in the process of um getting a home of some sort and needed some help with some moving and stuff like that. So Hmm. he didn't want me on the truck. He wanted a a male trainee on the truck so that they can assist him with that Hmm. and, you know, whatever. (laughs) But I I wasn't helping him, you know. (laughs) I was was in the way. (laughs) I wasn't wanted there. So, Hmm. yeah. So so much for that. So... So how 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 long would you how long was you with the second trainer? The second trainer um, is the person I actually completed my training with. But again, um, it started off good. I, I hate to say it as it always does, but <laughs> it started off good. I, I have to admit that it started off good in the beginning. Um, you know, we were getting along. You know, I was. He was letting me at least listen to music and stuff like that. Um, previous trainer, he had strict uh, guidelines in regards to music and uh, stuff like that. So I, I did enjoy that. And then, as it, again, when it got time for me to get off that truck, I don't know what it is. It got time for me to get off that truck. Um, things change, you know. Um it's almost like he didn't want me to get off that truck until he was ready for me to get off the truck. <laughs> and it wasn't anything sexual. It was just that he, you know, the, the I, I guess a lot of, a lot of trainers, I'm not going to say all trainers, a lot of trainers, they enjoy the additional or supplemental income that they get from training, which, you know, they're entitled to that. I wouldn't say entitled, that's a little strong, but um, they deserve that. You know, you get, you, you deserve to get paid for, any job or service that you render, especially training. Um, but a lot of trainers get kind of, you know, uh, money hungry, I guess. Right. And we were on a particular load that he saw was well paying, and he didn't want to take a break in that load to get me back to the uh, terminal. Mm-hmm. And if, whether I had my specified qualified hours or not he didn't want to take a break in that load um you know in order to take me back to the terminal to, to complete my processing um he didn't want to take a break in that load and so he refused to um you know do that so i had to do what i needed to do um which was contact the correct protocol to get to the terminal <laughs> <laughs> And it's, it's crazy because I'm like, you know, I'm glad I didn't have a, situ- a situation where I was, you know, being sexually harassed or sexually confronted or something like that. But when he didn't want to get me back to the terminal, 
I thought of I thought of all the situations that could have happened. You know, if if that was that type of situation, what if I was I, w- I was starting to think? You know, what if I was in a hostile situation with this person, or in a, a sexual harassment type of situation with this person, and just because they have a certain type of load, they can avoid the terminal or or not go to the terminal, and then I'm just held here. You know, that that's not right. Right. And I made sure that I told proper pro- protocol that, you know, you went, make sure that you guys are keeping an open communication line with your trainees because this could have been a, a dangerous situation. You you can't tell a trainee, oh, oh you're not going to the terminal. I mean, who, what trainer does that unless they, you know, want some type of negative, you know, confrontation with their trainees? I, 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 again, that's something else that stood out in my mind. And, you know, going, not finishing college, I, I wanted to go to college to be a teacher. And now that I'm in trucking, I can still be a teacher. And those experiences in my training stick out to me that, you know, when I, whenever I decide to go into being a trainer, I want to make sure that I'm being sensitive to that training needs because I was faced with certain situations. So, so, let, so let me ask you this. Um, so let me ask you this. Um, let me ask you this. Being that, being that you had, you know, those experience with those two trainers, um, would you consider going into training? Yes. Yes. I mean, you know, um, I, I know a lot of people, live by the thing, you know, one one bad after four go, but um I feel like my negative or, you know, not so pleasant experiences kinda give me uh, a learning curve that I can, you know, go into it, you know, knowing I've been through those negative experiences and I can tell my training, look, you know, I know it's gonna be difficult at times. I know, you know, I know this because I've been where you are. And no matter how long I drive, whether I drive 20 years, 50 years, 30 years, whatever, I'm not going to forget that. I was once a trainee. When I see people struggling in the in the truck stop or struggling at a chip or a receiver, I try to make sure that I remember, okay, I was once that person. And I try to, if I'm able to, I try to help. You know, because I think of that, you know, I wasn't always able to back. I wasn't always able to uh, move my tandems. I wasn't always to know how to distribute weight properly or, you know, get fuel properly or know how much fuel weighs and, you know, know how to navigate, you know, know where not to go or, you know, things like that. So I feel like that would give me a, kind of an upper hand. You know, and it's a shortage on female tra- uh, trainers as it is because of those, um, I wouldn't, well, it's a shortage on female drivers. And I would say part of the reason is because there's a shortage of female trainers. So um, it's a shortage of female drivers as well because they fear the type of, not the type, not necessarily specifically the type of stuff I went through, but they fear those negative um, or dangerous or harmful experiences, and you know, they they don't, they want to know that if they go into training, that something bad is not going to happen. Okay. So me being a female and me being a driver, um, and me being a driver that wants to be a trainer at some point, I feel like those negative experiences. Yes, they were negative. Yes, they were not pleasant. I think they would give me the upper hand in being a trainer because I, I would I would always put those things in the forefront of my mind dealing with any trainee that any trainee that I would get the opportunity to work with. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well Sam Sauce Boss. Man. Well, it looks like that you're here, though. It's lo- it, it, it looks like that you're here. I mean, you've been out there for two, two and a half, uh, two years, 
doing the damn thing. Uh, what advice do you have for, you know, for females that are coming out into the industry? What, what advice do you got for them? If trucking is something you want to do, do it. Don't let anybody discourage you. Don't let any experience discourage you. Don't let anybody, uh, anybody other negative experiences discourage you. Just do it. Keep an open mind. Stay positive and just do it. That's what's up. That's um, what's it may up. be tough. It may be tough, but you better. That's what's up. Sam Sauce Boss. Sam Sauce Boss, thank you for coming on to the show. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. You so, so welcome. You so, so welcome. Uh, You guys, yes, sir. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with with your boy Lockout Men, you can do that by way of hitting me up in the Gmail. That's LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. Or hit me up in the DM over in Instagram. That's where I am all the time. Yo, if you guys like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. You got to make sure you hit that all button because when you hit that all button, you, you'll get it. I am Lockout Men. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And this is the Lockout Men Podcast Show. i like to thank my special guest today, Sam Sauce Boss, for coming on. And again, i like to thank you guys for watching and listening. Until next time, we're going to get on up out of here. I am going to say peace. Sam, we'll talk to you later. Yeah, I'm the dope man. All right. Be on the highway. Yeah, I'm the dope man. Yeah, 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 I'm the dope man. Yeah, I'm the dope man. Some like the bird man. Running out of town, feed the birds in my bird bag. Uh, 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 uh